Everyone, so today we're reviewing Unit 6 of Chemistry of Regions. Uh, this is going to be on solutions. All right, so let's get right into the question. So the first one says a 2.5 liter aqueous solution contains 1.25 moles of a dissolved sodium chloride. And the equation is below. Compare the freezing point of this solution to the freezing point of a solution that contains 0.75 moles of sodium chloride per 2.5 liter of solution. So it's the same total amount of solution, except the only thing that's changing is the number of moles. And so the concentration has changed. Uh, so to sort of illustrate the thinking here, let's see you have five grams of water and one liter of water. So obviously the more water you have, it's gonna be harder to freeze, or at least it's gonna take a longer amount of time um, because there's more surface area, the amount of heat loss changes as well. Um, but if you think about this question, the more concentration you have, it takes away from the existing water, right, in the solution that's trying to freeze. And so what happens is it creates what is called a freezing point depression. So it's going to go down to the extremes. The freezing point is going to be lower the greater concentration you have. So, boom, there we have it. A uh, total of 1.4 moles of sodium nitrate is dissolved in enough water to make 2 liters of an aqueous solution. Uh, so it's 1.4 moles of sodium nitrate is dissolved in enough water. The gram flow of mass of sodium nitrate is 85 grams per mole. And we want us to determine the molarity of the solution. So the molarity equation on the reference table is molarity is equivalent to moles of solute over liters of solution. So how many moles of the solute do we have? Well, we have 1.4 moles right here because it's dissolved in enough water to make two liters of an aqueous solution. So our total liters of solution is two liters. And so ultimately this 85 grams per mole, that's not really, we don't really need that piece of information to solve the problem, but we can just up the equation and we get 0 0.7 uh, molar. All right, so number seven, what is the mass of KNO3 that must dissolve in 100 grams of water to form a saturated solution at 50 degrees Celsius? So for this one, go to table G on your reference table, and we know that it has to be dissolved in 100 grams of water, um, which is nice because the reference table is already in scale with solubility per 100 grams of H2O. Um, and it needs to form a saturated solution at 50 degrees Celsius. All right, so go to 50 degrees Celsius and you're just gonna line it up, right? So you can go from 50 degrees Celsius all the way up to KNO3 and then just find where that intersects with the curve of KNO3. And we can see it's in between 80 and 90. Um, so let's say about 84 grams. And so that is the total amount of KNO3, that is going to be dissolved in that 100 grams of water to form a saturated solution at 50 degrees Celsius. All right, number eight, explain in terms of distribution of particles why the solution is a homogeneous mixture. So what we have here is HCl gas, and it is dissolved in looks like 200 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. And so what happens here is that the uh, HCl becomes H plus ions and is Cl ions. And so these ions are now in that water. And so when you have a gas that dissolves in a liquid like uh, water, it's going to be homogeneous because the particles or those ions will be equally distributed, right? So it's a uniform distribution and that is what makes it homogeneous. All right, number nine, based on reference table G, identify in terms of saturation, the type of solution made by the scientist. So the scientists uh, made a solution that has 44 grams of hydrogen chloride gas and 200 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. So the first thing you notice here is that they give us this in terms of 200 grams of water. So because the reference table is scaled down to 100 grams of water, we need to scale everything else to that proportion. So if we think about this, it can dissolve 44 grams and 200 grams of water, right? So 44 grams in 200 grams of water. So what this means is that, well, the first thing you have to realize is that the more water you have, the more solute that you're gonna be able to dissolve. Um, so because of this, if we scale this down to 100 grams of H2O, 
what do you think will happen to the amount of um, grams of hydrogen gas that will dissolve? Well, it's going to be halved as well because from 200 to 100, it's one half. So this will go from 44 grams to 22 grams. And so now we can just line this up, right? 22 grams and 20 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Celsius and 22 grams. We can line it up and we can see that it is under the curve for the HCl uh, line. And HCl is one of those examples that you know it's a gas because the curve goes down. So as you increase temperature, it gets less soluble. Um, so as a matter of fact, even if you didn't scale this down, if, even if you were at 44 grams at 20 degrees Celsius, you'd still be under that curve. And so it is unsaturated. So let's see here. Boom. All right. So number 10, identify the two ions present in this solute. So what is a solute? Looks like it is three moles of dissolved NH4Cl. All right. So NH4 and Cl. Uh, so pretty simple here. We just want to identify the charges on each of these. So NH4, you can find the charge on table E. NH4 is ammonium, which has a positive charge. So our first one is just NH4 plus, and then our second one will be Cl. And I'm assuming this is a balanced equation. So Cl should be negative. And so that is our two ions. All right, determine the molarity of the solution. So very similar to a question we did up there. Molarity is just moles of solute over moles of solution. And so we can just have the moles of solute, which in our case is three moles over the uh, liters of solution, which is two liters. So three over two is 1.5. And there we have it. So that does it for the unit six review of chemistry. If you guys learned something, make sure you subscribe. And thank you for watching.